Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. It's good to see you all again. I'm here with my partner, John Coleman, and our favorite doctor, Dr. Liz Lister. Hello, everybody. Dr. Liz, good to see you again. Likewise, gentlemen. Great to see you. Um, I have uh, I have just a little, uh, pardon me, just while I'm, you guys continue because I'm just going to do this. Don't you hate people who do that? I, it's the it's the multitasking of the 21st century. Oh no, I love it. I love it when they do it at a dinner table, but we also have the TV on. Yeah, and uh, they answer the phone as well. <laughs> oh, drives me crazy. That's fun. Drives me crazy. Now maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm getting older. Whatever it is, I really have found that I'm. I like to do one thing at a time and then move on to the next thing. Very good. That's good. Art, what's your experience with multitasking? Well, you, because, you well, because I, I have a, a, a computer background, spent uh, 30 years selling uh, and uh, uh, managing companies with uh, computer graphics. Uh, I'm of the great belief that uh, we, there's, we, even though it looks like we can do a lot of things at a time, we really can only concentrate on one thing at a time. So I don't believe that true multitasking other than computers, you can only really do one thing at a time. You may be able to switch back and forth fairly rapidly, but in order to really uh, pay attention to something, you've actually give that full attention. So I'm not a true, I, I believe that there are people who do a lot of things at the same sort of time, but they're really swapping back and forth and it tends to cause mistakes. That's my opinion. Well, guess what? The science supports your thoughts on the oh, matter. Oh. It turns out that multitasking is actually an illusion, at least the way we think of it. We think, oh, we can multitask and get a lot of things done and be productive. However, the brain science supports exactly what you were just saying. Our human brains really can only focus on one task at a time. So when researchers have looked at this, they have found in evidence that says exactly what you just said. The evidence shows that trying to multitask actually will slow you down. It'll mm. slow you down overall. It'll make you less efficient at each task that you're trying to do, quote unquote, at the same time. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it is. It is. Also, it'll decrease your accuracy. So they, they test this with people by having them do little puzzles or particular tasks like in a research environment. And when they have people multitask, it'll actually decrease their accuracy, which that can be a real danger if you are somebody who is <clears throat> you're a researcher, you're crunching data, you are in charge of data for your company, and you're trying to prepare different reports all at the same time, that your actual accuracy could go down, not just, in, in addition to making you less efficient, you could actually end up making more mistakes. Well, it's texting and driving right. is, is what it is. It's the classic distraction. That's right. So multitasking can be distracting. But I guess it also depends on what you're doing. Um, uh, for instance, uh, 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 Dr. Liz, you know my wife Linda, and she is a uh, a, a knitter. Uh, she uh, knits all the time, and she can knit when she's having conversations. She's also taking a film course, and so is required to watch. Uh, in fact, uh, this particular week she was watching Dancing with Wolves, uh, but she also finished uh, most of a sweater during that three-hour period of time. And uh, yeah. so, but but she's using, although she uh, isn't fully multitasking because she's looking to make sure she has the right count on the rows. Uh, she's so proficient at it that it looks like she's doing two things at once. But I constantly see her going over and stopping every so often and making a mark on a piece of paper where I got, you know, 82 stitches for this row, the next one's 87, the next one's 83, whatever it happens to be. So uh, right. I, I can see her going back and forth, but she does it kind of quickly. These are such great examples of the perfect example and that also is what the data and research shows, is that when people are doing either simple, more simple tasks, okay, so obviously knitting requires accuracy. 
However, the actual motion of doing the knitting, it's a relatively simple task as opposed to someone who's operating a um, piece of equipment while somebody's having surgery, okay? So different level of complexity of the task, that affects how it goes when people try to multitask. And also, so how the complexity of the task, right? And also exactly what you just said. I, I, I imagine Linda's been knitting for a really long time and she's very good at it and it's in her body. It requires less mental processing from her than it would, for example, for me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I used to do some knitting. I did a few like scarves. Okay. <laughs> I can't do anything round. Don't give me a sleeve. No, it just a little bit more. <laughs> However, no, she's, me, really, she's really good at it. Yeah. It would be a very, for me, it would be a complex task. It would not be something that's in my muscle memory, that's in my body that I can do. So, for example, if somebody is having also the importance of the task. Mm. So if I'm washing dishes and I have my ear pod, my AirPods in and I'm talking with someone, maybe I can I can probably do those things at the same time. Neither of them are terribly complex. However, if I really need to focus on what my friend is saying, I really need to not do anything else. That is just a human brain attribute. What's kind of yeah. interesting, uh, I think another perfect example of it is something that 90% uh, uh, of everybody in our audience who drives and, and uh, talks on a cell phone uh, at the mm -hmm. same time. Uh, how many times have you done the same trip over and over and over again, and you're talking to a friend and you miss an exit? Okay, right. and, and you don't even realize it until you're two or three exits down, because really? you got so wrapped up in that conversation. Yeah. So that, that's a perfect example of multitasking your driving. OK, uh, you may be driving relatively safely, but you just get distracted because you're having you're getting so engaged in the conversation. And I think they also did studies once to find out that people just chatting with somebody else in the car. OK, that's right. did, did the same thing. Yeah, I, I when we're driving along and I miss an exit like that, uh, uh, my wife says, what, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm on an autopilot. Right. In other words, <laughs> I was supposed to turn here, but I'm so used to going straight. That yes. I just did what I, I, I always repeat. Yeah, so you know. she's, she's not buying it. We didn't buy it. You're not buying it. <laughs> <laughs> you are pointing, you're both pointing to something called switching time. Our human brains require switching time. That's the term that they use. And when we don't have enough of the switching time, we actually become less productive. Or if we're just using more time to do the switching. Mm. Okay, and you and you both mentioned your wives, and then there's all, I have stories also driving down the freeway with my husband, which are kind of funny. But there's it's thought that women are better at multitasking than men. However, it, again, it, the, what the data shows is that that only applies when they are simple tasks. The more complex tasks, no gender differences in the research studies when they're having them do, again, like in that research setting, complex set of the same tasks, same poor performance across the board when we're trying to do more and focus on more than uh, one thing at a time. There's one more funny piece of information from the research, and that is that they also, when they were studying people and having them do these multitasking tests, they also ask them, do you think you're good at multitasking? Okay. And the people who said, yes, I'm good at multitasking. Of the testing, they actually were worse. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. That's so interesting. They, yeah, they think they're good at it. Therefore, they do it. But yeah. actually, at the level of the brain, mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, just as a, a side note, um, I came to my conclusions about multitasking and computers back in the day when computers only had one main memory, one, one CPU, one central processing unit. Uh, the truth of the matter is that computers can do multitasking now because you hear uh, a, a two core, four core, eight core. That means that they have actually have eight or nine or 10 separate uh, processing units built into their right. system so that they can actually be doing separate tests simultaneously right. uh, uh, so I guess uh, I'm not an expert uh, in that uh, because I've, 
I'm, I'm back old school where I, I learned everything. But uh, so I think the multitasking should be left to the computers. And unless you're doing a very simple task, uh, and by the way, I want to say women probably are better at multitasking than we are because they know they know their limitations. We don't. Guys don't. <laughs> guys, just go, guys, just, guys just go ahead anyway. Well, that... I, I appreciate uh, I appreciate the lesson that it's the complexity mm. of the task and the importance of it. You know, right. obviously driving and texting, I think, is my classic example of um, conflict of interest. That's right. Um, and, and not worth yeah. the, the chance that something could go wrong there. But um, it's interesting that it does it, it does change that relationship of um, getting things done, the efficiency getting going yeah. lower when the task becomes more uh, complex. By, yes. by the way, Dr. Liz, um, uh, have you noticed uh, that some people are frustrated because they think that they can't multitask? That there's something wrong with them, right? Exactly. That's why. I, that's why I say that multitasking is overrated. Mm. I think that's absolutely true. I think people think there's something wrong with them if they are not good at multitasking, whereas actually that is a better way to apply our brains. Another little tidbit that the research shows is that people's IQ goes down when they do too much multitasking. Hmm. It's actually wow. for our brains. That must, John, that must be why you and I are so smart. Because we can barely do one thing at a time. I'm just so saying. sitting on the porch, sitting on the porch and drinking a margarita, that kind of multitasking is still okay? For you. You could do that. <laughs> You're good at it. For the rest of us, what we have to do, and you can do it on the porch as well, the the antidote to multitasking is to schedule the tasks. Mm. The best sure. productivity is when you have your list of things to do and you schedule them out. That's what the research shows. Wow, great advice. Well, I would. There were a couple of things I wanted to say, but I I only want to say one thing at a time, which is thank you for for slowing me down. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.